you know, I guarantee you it'll mess up because that's what happens to me all the time. Are we live? It's not telling me anything. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. I just hit my intro. We are live. I'm muted. Oh, here we go. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have another fascinating guest with me today. Back, I think this is the third time she's been on my show. I have with me Indigo Angel, and um, she's going to be sharing some amazing information today about, you know, she's like a brilliant esoteric researcher. Sometimes, honestly, she gets me lost in her vocabulary. I have to, like, go back and say, what did she say? And then, and basically like, you know, she'll, you know, but she, she makes a lot of sense and she, uh, she, she talks very good knowledge. So um, she's going to be talking today about the Hawaii grid matrix to Washington, DC, human trafficking, stuff like that. And maybe if, uh, if maybe somebody has a question, maybe she could take a question from the audience. I don't know. I didn't think about that, but maybe we could yeah. do something like that too. But That's first, awesome. so yeah. So if you guys have a good question, maybe put it in the chat. I'll get the chat at some point. But I want to welcome her to the show. Indy, thank you for coming back on. How are you? I am doing amazing. Thank you so much for having me back on the channel. I look forward to bringing forward some information today that I think um, is imperative overall to uh, humanity and, and the restoration of the grids. So, yeah. Yeah, I and I just to want to say to you, thank, or congratulations on your new move. You moved into a new house. You're in the uh, sunshine state now. How are you liking it? I am so happy I've been on cloud nine. Um, it's been really amazing. I have been getting settled in and, you know, unpacking and refurnishing things and checking out the city. And it's real collectic down here. There's definitely a unique vibe, you know, an oceanic kind of vibe you know, coastal life vibe. Everybody's wearing like crazy t-shirts and crazy shorts and there's like monster trucks on the street. It's it's really, um, you can tell there's a lot of expression of people's personality here. You know, there's not a lot of holding back. And so it feels great. It's exciting. And I think I'm where I'm supposed that's to be. Awesome. That, that's awesome. Um, so what are we gonna be getting into today? Um, Hawaii Grid Matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I consider myself to be a planetary grid reader, and it's where I interpret intuitively and psychically the holographic architecture of the land, of the earth, of the geography, and what exists within that. Um, I have access to my own internal avatar matrix, which is the 12D um, templating, essentially. And so I often will remote, remote view into the uh, hollow records or just the um, the the library, the Akashic library, essentially. And so um, earlier today, I essentially just did a, a group grid session where we were working on locations in Egypt, uh, Alexandria, the Mediterranean Sea, the Cyprus Island. And we were just running a lot of clearings there uh through um transmission and also through invocation and also just um through our own energy centers being receivers of information and we were just channeling a lot of mm -hmm. is that is that better to do that live or can you do it over is it is it just as effective if you do it over the internet well it's definitely a different experience if you're doing it boots on the ground if you're doing it on the land in the land you're gonna definitely have a lot more detail that's gonna come through but there's a lot that you can pick up doing it remotely um so yeah we do a lot of this remotely in group sessions and collective mind shared experiences and um so a lot of information definitely does come through and it, i think it's a preparation process for when you're preparing yourself to go actually work on location so that's why i do so much premeditative work 
gearing up into a larger uh, rescue mission. Um, as you might know that I recently just went to the Vatican in 2022, and we were restoring a lot of the degradation and a lot of the um, wormholes and black holes and inverted systems there when we went. And um, so essentially I've been called to work on the next reversal gate system, 5D reversal gate system, which is Washington, DC. And I honestly think Washington, DC is worse than the Vatican. Um, it's much more infiltrated on so many levels internationally. Um, there is there's so much more corruption there, right? Yeah, there's a lot of corruption. There's an immense amount of corruption, which was what I was going to actually get into today, talking about the um, trafficking that is going on um, between DC and Hawaii. So as I kind of tune in, I'm tuning in on this location to prepare to do grid work there. Um, I'm picking up collectively on all of the surrounding locations that are kind of interlinked um, into that reversal gate system. Um, and just to be clear, I work on all different types of templating. So I hold the indigo type one templating. I also hold indigo type three. So within my indigo type three, um, I'm more naturally and, and intuitively more guided to extract negative and nefarious energies out of the earth. That's a part of my mission. That's a part of what I do here on this earth. I extract this alien machinery and negative um, machines that are basically inside the earth. And so I work on this in terms of my indigo type three templating. This is what another reason why I'm called to the reversal gate systems. Okay. Um, but the reversal stargates on this earth it means that they're carrying anti-life architecture or anti-life purpose and meaning. And it serves the lesser purpose of death culturalism. And honestly, it's about harvesting indigo souls and humankind and basically binding them in mind control and enslavement to the beast machines. So this is what's happening at these reversal sites. It means that the energy and the particle fields and the electrons are genuinely rotating <laughs> in anti-clockwise motion. And so um, it's a funneling system that has been artificially created, essentially, that's funneling that energy um, to feed other systems that manufacture these lower density reality timelines and worlds um, to run the corrupted timeline, timelines and also artificial ley lines. One of the, thing, the things that I was seeing between Hawaii and Washington, D.C. is that the ley lines are actually artificial. Um, they've actually tunneled out and they've um, distorted the natural and organic ley line systems. And they have AI and, um, you know, other secret agendas, secret programs, secret agencies have basically tapped in the resource ley lines of, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> why would they, why, what, 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 why did they create the artificial ley lines? Are they doing that to generate energy on a negative behalf? Is that, does that make sense or no? Yes, yes. It is to funnel the energy into lower density timelines, lower density worlds that are powered through black hole systems. Essentially, it's kind of like the core of the root of it, but it is to um, like the lower astral. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like the lower astral um, purgatory realms. Um, where a lot of degradation is taking place and where the, ma the majority of the harvesting is people can't identify what that exactly is. It is through the, the shadow that you see collectively. When you see mass migrations, when you see mass inflation, when you see the degradation of the U.S. dollar, when you see homeless people in massive amounts, like when you see the drug and the fentanyl abuse, when you see murder and crime rates rise in your cities, this is how you know that these lower astral fields are over the timelines and the reality spheres within which in people live. Um, and so this is um, one way that we can identify it. I think one of the things in terms of what is powering the beast machines in terms of the elite, because this is something that comes down from the top down, is human trafficking. Okay, and I know you were hesitant to get into this topic. I just talked about it on my channel. Um, but it is 
something that really links the corruption timelines and the corruption reality fields from Hawaii to DC together. Because um, through the research that I've done um, on this, essentially some of the largest um, human trafficking cases ever to have been filed in US history um, happened in Hawaii and Washington DC. As you know, the smaller islands, the Bimini Islands, and a lot of the, the other local unheard of islands, a lot of these are used for these type of things. Hawaii is no different. And so um, there was a case that actually took place back in from 20, 2003 to uh, 2010, um, the EEOC filed its largest farm worker human trafficking suit against Global Horizons Farms. And it's where they um, brought about 400 people over from Thailand and forced them through slave labor and sexual abuse, sexual trafficking um, in farms in, in Hawaii and Washington, DC. And so um, this, this is just one of the ties. There's many different ties that leads us into these corrupted currents, but this is one that's definitely been ignored and kind of swept up underneath the rug. I bet nobody probably even knows that the largest trafficking suit ever filed was happened in Hawaii and Washington DC, right? In these two locations. So it's because the elite and those that are on, you know, in terms of the media, they're not going to tell us about these things. But human trafficking is is a huge deal at this time. Um, can you still see me? Yeah, I can still see you. Okay. It's a massive epidemic on planet Earth. Okay, that what's basically th these are acts these are energetic things that happen between humans between indigos between you know whoever whatever that are fueling um this the uh, the empowerment of the lower astral when we talk about these realms that are existing and so it is a massive epidemic on planet earth it also exists off earth as well it is a part of galactic human history slavery um and it's been going on for a long, long time, but it's, you know, we need to bring awareness around it because um, it is another form of a mind control system that is really working on um, a much deeper level. And, and it's, there's really so much to this um, if you really want to get into it, but it's really children who suffer. Um, it's children who are trafficked. Um, it's children who get recruited and um, and it, it does affect the islands of Hawaii. Hawaii itself, and what people may not realize is going on, is because a lot of people may be very comfortable in their living situations at this time, but we are going through a huge migration in this country. People are constantly migrating to other places on this earth. Hawaii itself is going through massive gentrification, which is where all of the areas where lower income people or natives or indigenous or, you know, whoever it was, um, larger, some amounts of money is moving in and taking over those lands. And so I think the statistics are that like 50% of people that live in Hawaii have been ultimately displaced from their native lands. And this is something that is happening at a rapid rate. Um, and that number just- oh, I guess I say about right. that. Do you think, I didn't mean to interrupt, but do you think that has something to do with like them trying to like, usher in a new timeline that they want to come in, but they're actually just doing it in this reality. But like, or what do you think about that? I think there is a massive income gap in terms of wealth. Um, you're either, either on the new age tip of um, becoming a millionaire or a billionaire, or you're completely broken homeless. There's not a lot of in between the middle class no longer really exists. It's kind of like a, you know, an illusion. Um, so if you don't have money, you don't really survive. And this is the agenda. This is the new world order. This is how they will push everybody into um, submission, ultimately, is because they can control the needs of food, housing, everything. And so um, honestly, personally, I've been saying that what is going on is a slow kill. I think they're slowly um, executing certain um, degradational cities such as California, New York, Florida, Texas. Um, you know, these are some of the states that get hit the hardest when it comes to child trafficking and human trafficking. Follow these trails because these trails are telling you um, what's happening on the lower lower realms. 
Um, and so, yeah, they, they, they don't really obviously care what happens to these people, you know, because we're spending billions of dollars on war instead of investing it in our homelands where people have the need. And so I don't even think they keep track of these things anymore in terms of like homelessness rates and all of these things. But, um, it's really about spiritually. So I'm talking about grid work. I'm talking about how we can go in as spiritual healers. We think about the indigo type two templating. This is how we spiritually heal the 12th dimensional templating within us, right? We can heal the body. We can work on each other. But when you go indigo type one, you're going to the next level. You're going into the planetary body, which is mean you're using your spiritual gifts to heal the earth's fields. And we can raise the consciousness of the land. It's about working with the land codes. This is the new shamanic revolution. This is really what 2023 is ultimately about. It's the rise of the grid workers. Okay. And it's a new technology that is infiltrating um, the higher consciousness community to help expand these resources and knowledge of um, working with the consciousness of the land to work on our behalf to essentially overcome uh, the degradation and ultimately the attack from the negative agendas and the elite that are imposing itself upon those that are in a lesser uh, position essentially in life. Yeah. Yeah. Space slavery is out of this world. I was just pulling up some of the comments. Um, th this is this is fascinating. But when you get into the human trafficking, it's such a sad thing because sex is such a sacred thing, you know, and it can be a, a beautiful thing. But when it's used for something like that, it's it's for the person that it's happening to. It, it almost kills the person. You know what I mean? It really does. Because Absolutely. can you imagine being used as a sex slave? Like what that does to your consciousness? Like that's almost something that somebody can't even come back from. You know what I mean? Like, imagine, like, being raped over and over again and then having to try to come back from that. That's horrible. Like, well, you know, 70 percent like, of people who are human trafficked are suicidal. Seventy one percent. So they don't come back from it. Let's just put it that way. Suicide is a um, fracture in your astral cord to the earth body. That means something so great has come through so immense on your consciousness, on your emotional body and your spiritual body that you genuinely have lost all ties to the physical reality. You are relentlessly um, ready to release yourself from this world. And so that fractures your astral uh, earth cord to the earth. So we have astral cords that actually keep us anchored here in this reality. I mean, something's really actually fractured that. It's not an easy thing for someone to ultimately come back from. It takes many, many years to regenerate and to repair those types of wounds. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of statistics when it comes to this. I went over a lot of this in my last update, but, um, you know, I think um, 70 to 80 percent of human trafficking is for sex. Um, there are more human trafficking slaves in the world today than there ever has been in human history. This is a secret enslavement program that's going on. This isn't something that is just, you know, from the past, the Atlantic slave, we look at all these past things like the Atlantic slave trade when we had like these real, when we can identify these real um, enslavement systems. But I mean, this is something that is real hush hush. You're not really allowed to talk about it. You're not really allowed to spread the information. As you said, you were hesitant to even talk about it today. But it is probably one of the things that's most impacting the world. An estimated 27 million adults to 13 million children around the world are victims of human trafficking. Um, Thailand is one of the worst places in the world. Thailand, I can't even tell you the things that I've heard. They are atrocious. The gut, um, <clears throat> Willy Wonka is involved in the trafficking there. It is done openly and publicly on the streets as business. It is not something that is not um, kept like a secret thing. So you can imagine how. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing movies like I mean, like I, I know it's portrayed in a movie, but like a lot of these girls, they get put in like 
drug, like drugged out states and like they're not even conscious and that's just like they're being like raped like it's 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 a really sad thing like it's like it's it's heartbreaking honestly it really is i mean i wish we could make a change like i did look it up though like there are a lot of videos on it on youtube i mean like but i don't think it's being talked about enough to this extent like to where you add the esoterics angle in which you do you know i think that's important right Oh, for sure. It's really important to see how parasitic this actually is. Um, yeah, and the energetic component it, is it, like it's a... Current, it is currently the world... It is the world slavery system. We don't, we don't have slavery systems like we used to for manual labor. Like, maybe we do on some level. We do. But this is the new world slavery system. And we don't want to look at it because we're too busy trying to figure out whether we're a man or a woman. We can't figure that out. So how are we supposed to look at how we're being sexually um, used and parasitized of our soul energy to superimpose this karmic exchange? This is this is a karmic exchange for the masses. We all have to deal with this. Um, this is what the negative agenda fight so hard to retain and their control and access over the earth and the inhabitants here. A lot of these people use the Stockholm syndrome and they dehumanize people to levels of deep levels of fragmentation within their subconscious. So they are like animals cornered in a cage. You know, they, they defend their own enslavement and um, their own mind control matrix. And so it is a codependency of Paris energy which has infected the reptilian brain cor cortex and it is a it's a contract with the dark forces and it's very much here and relevant this isn't just happening in you know shitty neighborhoods it's happening in everywhere everywhere you have to watch your children you have to watch um even young adults because you know, just getting caught up in the wrong things can ultimately lead you into some of these spaces and places. I definitely think Detroit and Michigan, Chicago, these areas, I mean, I know those are, I mean, everywhere, Miami, it's all of, you know, major city areas, really. Um, Probably every city, to be honest with you. I mean, like, and if it's not a city that's, that's doing the trapping, it's a city used to funnel the trafficking. Yeah, definitely. Or pick up potential, potential, uh, people that they would traffic you know they're getting the people from all over the world and they're you know like i mean this is like a like a sophisticated network of people doing this like you said it's definitely willy wonka but then it's other organizations too like the mafia right. you know um gangs like you know the asian gangs the mexican gangs and it's and they all work together you know what i mean like it's not one race or anything that's doing it this is like like this is like a strategic plan that's making people million dollars because you know, have you ever heard the phrase sex sells? It's sad to say, but it does. But, it, you know, that's that's what, what's going on here, I think. Yeah, it's really playing off the, um, the lower dimensions of the human body. It's also um, lack of reservation for divine will and free will, seeing people as disposable. Um, but that's kind of where we are really at. I mean, this is what happens when the collective body is um separated from their connection to nature and nurture um so don't expect these things to get better until we reconnect ourselves back into the earth body and give a fuck about the earth in the first place i mean it's we get more separated the connection to the earth and to the spirit body is fragmented and separated more and more and more each day and there's less connection of our true nature and who we are, this is getting more removed and impacted and um, installed into the subconscious where people actually don't even know this anymore. And it's actually something that's not even conscious. Um, and so that's why I brought up the Hawaii connection to DC. Um, Hawaii is a very, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I screen share it for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, Hawaii is, I think Hawaii, especially in terms of the DC mission that we're doing, I think it's imperative that we connect Hawaii into DC and try to overrun those artificial tapped ley lines holding, um, because Hawaii holds these free crystal electrons um, to the timelines of Lemuria. Lemuria 
is a time where we were very connected um, to these things. And so the energy of Hawaii, you receive, you receive spiritual antioxidants that boost your spiritual immune system and they stream direct codes um, from the archaic mentality okay, of these times. And so Hawaii is actually a remnant of Mu. It's a remnant of the actual ancient original motherland. And it has a lot of healing powers. There is nowhere like anywhere in the world like Hawaii. Okay, you see that that uh, target, that's like a target dot. It's like a, <laughs> it's like um, the bullseye, this, you mean? Or what? Bullseye, yeah. Yeah, this one. So this is the apex of the Polynesian Triangle. And um, this is really, um, the, the Polynesian Triangle is made up of a region of Pacific um, three island groups. So it's Hawaii, it's Easter Island, Rapa Nui, and New Zealand. And it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful healing vortex in the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean itself is considered the zero point field of the earth. Now they, I do feel that there's a manipulation and tampering in this because the way that they design map systems, they should put the Pacific Ocean at the center of your map to let you know that is the center of the world. That's the center of our healing energy. The fact that they position it over the landmass, it's some BS because the zero point field truly runs through the Pacific. It runs through the ridge of the volcanic activity. And Hawaii is the closest landmass that's center point to that. Um, I'll zoom in here. You can see this underwater volcanic ridge that runs down here. So these are all dormant volcanoes that have erupted over precession cycles and timelines that have ultimately led to the creation of Hawaii itself. And volcanic energy is probably the most powerful vortexual energy that you're going to connect with on this earth, essentially. And so um, even the original descendants of the Hawaiian islands, they were called the Menahun people. And um, the bloodline is the ancient bloodlines of the ancient Nakals. The ancient Nakals were the original people of Mu. And so it means Mu or Mene means mana, which means power and Hun means unseen and hidden. And so there is this deep connection here. But again, there's a problem because we're going through this deep process of gentrification where everybody that is native to these lands are being ultimately displaced. Um, so this is the rapid um, change that we're going through here. But what's most important is that you cannot strip the Hawaiian islands of its true natural energies. Okay, these are natural vortexes. These are natural resources of life. And so it doesn't matter how much human tampering comes in and tries to sort and fuck up all these things. Pardon my language. Um, they can't override the currents of energy. Hawaii islands themselves have massive funnel systems. And I'm talking hundreds, if not thousands, of whirlwinds of funnel systems of electromagnetic energy that activates those islands. These vortexes are literally all over the land. Um, many, many people throughout history have gone to Hawaii to basically heal themselves. The islands are actually called the jewels of the Pacific Ocean, which means that they're holding the Emerald Covenant. They're holding the Emerald embodied encoding. And so um, just an example of that is that people have gone to Hawaii to release major deaths in the family, loss of relationships, breakups, getting over major illnesses and major life changes. Um, when 9-11 happened, okay, um, the, the governor of Hawaii actually gifted all of the families of the deceased from 9-11 to come and heal on the islands. Hawaii takes in suffering and transmutes it for the entire world. Um, and so I'm just zero, really zeroing in on this location here for the healing that has to happen in D.C. D.C., they are holding kind of like a... Um, 
they're holding like a, um, a stronghold in terms of the separation of nature and nurture. You can see it um, in, 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 in the White House here. Um, I've talked about this on updates that I've done on Washington, D.C., but you can see this is the White House. Okay, this is the White House here. This is actually like a thorax of a bee, and you have the bee's head, and you have the bee's antennae here in the land, and you have like the bottom part of This is a wasp, okay? And what people had been remoting in to see was that this queen bee is flipped up on her back, and they're holding the queen's energy. They're holding nurture and nature. They're holding it captive from the world here in this location by all of the technology, by all of the gray intelligence, by all of the extraterrestrial negative influences and in the Orion systems that they're working with through the, the AI development, through surveillance and tracking, through satellite, whatever it is, corrupted dark money in politics. This here has this is what has the world separated. Not only are they running this manipulation here, but they're also running down here at the Washington Monument, the Vesica Pisces distortion, right? Which is where they're over-sexualizing these grids. They place a monumental phallus in the ovum of the divine feminine, and they basically sexualize the grids, and they place dominance over that feminine nurturing nature energy. And this is, this is a... Um, this is why this has to be restored. This is why this has to be connected in. And I've been picking up that we need to um, work with the energy and the spirits of Hawaii to connect that back in because Hawaii is, there's, there's, nowhere, there's nowhere like it in the world. Um, even the spirit of aloha, okay? Aloha itself means generosity it means forgiveness. It means love. It comes from the native people of Hawaii. It has survived 200 years of oppression. And it is a word. It is a magical spell phrase. Aloha, believe it or not, it's a spell phrase that as soon as you say it, it diminishes the wounding of Western culture. Okay, so that's why we have to connect these systems together. Um, that's what I'm seeing at least. <laughs> what are you thinking, Rob? <laughs> I, I had myself muted. No, I think that's amazing. Uh, I don't, I don't really have any questions. Like, um, so someone had a question from the chat. Let me, let me pull this up. This is an interesting one. Maybe you, maybe you might know something about this. Azik says, um, can you see this on the chat? Wait, oh, let me see here. He says, uh, what does Detroit, Michigan have in connection with everything? They're just running really heavily degraded um, grid templating. They're definitely running free Masonic templating. You know, even if I've just uh, zoomed into Detroit, I can see the Masonic symbolism that's just immediately running in the landmass from from an overview perspective. Um, I do think they're they have Baphomet temples there as well. So there's just a lot of Satanic and Luciferian, I think, interference. Um, it's one place that they were able to um, tap into the natural resources and overtake the indigo soul templating there. And so it's been really struggling. I mean, it's it's going through, I think, bankruptcy as well. I can't remember what year they filed. The whole entire city filed for bankruptcy. Um, there is they don't have clean water, um, things like that. Oh, their, their water is horrible. Flint, Michigan's like. That's a sin. Well, I'm not religious, but like just a quote, like some, you know, like it's it's sad what people have to like um, deal with there. Like, I mean, like they can't even get clean. Well, you're exactly right. Like, I, yeah. I know, like you have sea fighters that have come from there, and like they they you know they talk about that. Like that's that's insane. Like, um, uh, what, what talk about your mission? Like you're going to be going to DC soon to do this this grid mission. Can you talk tell the the fans like what you're going to be doing there and stuff? Yeah, so we are going to be correcting the Stargate reversals. We're going to work on things like child trafficking and human trafficking. Even if it's done just in meditation, if it's done just in prayer, it's done just in vacation. You know, we can extract the energies through our words. We can extract the energies through our divine will. You know, people are like, how do you do this specifically? Well, we want to know the exact steps you take. Well, there's a lot of things we do. I mean, there's a lot of ritual type things that go into it. But 
it's per it's personal to the person that's doing it and it's different for each person that's doing it um i try to create the experience collectively where we're coming together and there's unification in what we're doing um but i do think that each individual has their own experience within it as well um but it is not to negate or take away the power of our words, the power of our spirit, the power of our intention, the power of what we desire, the transmissions that we send into the earth body core. You know, we are connected to the hall of records. We're connected to the Akashic field. That is a um, biofeedback system into the earth's divine blueprint. Okay, so when we go there and we acknowledge what is corrupted in these places and we send those divine intentions through our spiritual, you know, commitment to these things, we do make major changes that happen. We're going to focus on Comet Ping Pong, the Pizzagate scandal, dark money and politics. We're going to help to remove density locks and seal systems. We're going to correct reversal energy. Um, that's simply done just by sometimes doing rotational field spins around areas where reversal portals are spinning. We just get in there and we correct the reversal portals. We see a reversal portal spinning. We go in and correct it. Um, we're going to be working on the obelisk network and the sexualized grids of the Vesica Pisces. And we're going to be extracting negative alien machinery. We're going to be extracting black tesseract cubes. Um, Saturn matrices, any parasitic reptilian invader energy, um, any destruction codes, we're going to restore the queen bee in the hive mind. We're going to open up funnels and tunnels into ascension timelines. So not only are we extracting, but we're correcting and plugging things back into natural systems and restoring the natural and organic systems. The problem is with DC is there's so much corruption um that has happened there what's happened and why it's so hijacked is because they've gone throughout the years through the 1950s and 1960s and they've funneled and tunneled and digged out the natural resources so what flowed up underneath it they replaced it and redirected those natural systems so that's why there's it's tapped off it was a place that used to receive natural energy and resource and it no longer is um, and so they, they're altering the land and it alters the consciousness of, of the land when they do that, which, which hijacks it and, and turns it into reversal energy. What, what do you mean by J seals? I've heard you talk about that before. Like what exactly, and is that like a reptilian seal or what, what is that exactly? Like my, my fans might not know, like. Um, yeah, so J seal removal is something that I do. I think it's very important and imperative to those that are on this path of awakening. This is definitely far down the wormhole. Um, but when you get to that point that you're ready to remove persecution, you're ready to remove crucifixion wounding out of your body, out of your field, um, and you can recognize that there's an implant system that's running. This was installed um, according to the Jehovian Anunnaki, this happened during the Atlantean timeline and the fall of man. And they basically implanted seal systems in the seventh tonal line of the body on the left side of the body. And they capped these particular points, such as the pineal, there's seals in the pineal, there's seals in the glandular systems, also in the lymphatic systems of the body. Um, they placed them on the heart, the lungs, also other areas, um, writing that seventh tonal line. And um, it's to basically block them 10th dimensionally. It ties into the inverted universal tree of life and caps the consciousness so that ascension can't take really, can't really take place and that enslavement codes still run in their consciousness. So when people can't get past, you know, financial freedom, when people are, you know, feeling financially blocked, when they're feeling like they can't, achieve their dreams or ascend to greater heights, it's probably because there's crucifixion and enslavement encoding running that have to do with the manipulation of what the Anunnaki did to the genetic gene code. And so um, I, I, I go about it by saying that everyone on this earth carries a percentage of Anunnaki gene code. People don't like to hear that. It's definitely a stinger in the face. I'm not Anunnaki, blah, blah, blah. But that's the problem with all of this is nobody wants to see how the Anunnaki are deeply infused into everybody's inheritance coming down through the descendants of the four Abrahamic religions. And so oh, yeah. our forefathers were Anunnaki. I mean, you have an Anunnaki picture up behind you on your screen. 
And so, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's in yeah. everything, just like the Neanderthal DNA is in everything. So is the Anunnaki. Yeah, that, that, that's, there's actual proof to that. Like if you read the Sumerian tablets that they were basically the creators of the Abrahamic religions, I could get into it a little bit more, but I'm not trying to, I mean, like, you know, like Enlil's fought, or uh, Enlil was the chief deity of one of the cities of the Ziggurat temple of the city of Ur, which is in, which is in old Samaria, right? Abraham, who is the patriarch of all the Abrahamic religions, his father, Tara, was the chief priest for the deity Enlil in that Ziggurat temple in the city of Ur, if that makes any sense. And I think it makes a lot of sense. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, absolutely. But that, 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 and, yeah. But Abraham, you got to remember that Abraham was the key figure. He was the patriarch to all those Abrahamic religions. So if he had something to do or his father had something to do with Enlil or whoever the deity was in that ziggurat temple, which we probably know was an Anunnaki, then it, it, and he spawns all those religions. What's that a reflection on all those religions? I, I don't see how they could have been spawned any other way. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Abraham was a priest of Enlil. And uh, as according to <laughs> what I've read is, you know, Enlil was the one that was more um, on the destructive side of humanity. And um, so not saying that Abraham was destructive, but I mean, if you think about the what he brought forth in terms of birthing these kingdoms of, of religion, um, that was placed upon humanity, essentially, that has been very destructive and has bled into the war times, into the dark ages, and to ultimately what we see today, which is these strongholds of these reversal stargates at the Vatican and you, the Catholicism, right? Like this is kind of the stakeholders of crucifixion and contemption and murder. I mean, the, the basis of the Vatican ultimately is public execution. I mean, they pride themselves off of executing people and decapitation, and it's all over the Vatican Museum. They have walls and halls and hundreds of millions of heads that they've decapitated, and they keep them as their prize. I mean, there's so much dark occultic magic that's going on there. It's absolutely insane. And it is the core of the belly of the beast. And it is the reason in which the Maji Grail lines are so fragmented and can't find their dragon parts is because there are secret societies, there are Jesuit orders, there are Freemasonic orders, there are Templar orders that have been um, sealed off to keep these things um, in a place of repression and oppression and commission. And so... Um, that's what the removal of the J seals ultimately are, is to remove your Templar seals, to remove the cords in the celestial filaments of energy cords that keep you binded to the harvesting stations of the Templar systems where these religious structures and the um, descendants of the Templar Anunnaki have been able to infiltrate humankind to still feed off of their light body energy. That's still happening on a spiritual level. It comes through fear. It comes through the fear of God. It comes through the fear of the wrath of God. And that's what people are ultimately up against. Um, it's, about liberating yourself so that way you can reach God's sovereign and freedom. And so, yeah, I do those, I do uh, J seal removals ultimately. And I think in the fall, I'm actually going to be teaching a seal and implant removal certification course. So that way people can, you know, continue to remove this for other people because this is what it's about. It's about getting people to that level of God's sovereign freedom. So that way they can, you know, uh, achieve what they want to achieve on this earth, right? Because it's not, it's, it's about breaking free from the prison planet mentality. And yeah, you're, um, doing, you're doing amazing today. This is, this is really good information. Like you're, you're knocking it out of the park. Like, I really think this is like, really like, I mean, we have 60 people watching if that tells you like, you know, I mean, that's not a, a hell of a lot, but it's a good, I think it's a good crowd. And I think it's getting the message across one thing I wanted to ask you, this was a question from three. You can see it up on the screen. She just wants to know if we know about this Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, was it healed or how was it healed? And then I have a follow-up question to that. Do you think you will ever go to Hawaii to do a mission if it wasn't healed? Yes, I would go to Hawaii to do a mission. Actually, it's where I want to go after DC, but um, 
Do I think it was healed? I don't think anywhere that has been impacted by nuclear devastation is ultimately healed. Okay, nuclear devastation is ulcerative in terms of the energetic holographic architecture. Um, we still have rips and tears in the space-time continuum in Chernobyl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Fukushima. Okay, so that's never going to be erased from the Earth's memory. That is something that is installed as an ulcerative wounding in the Hall of Records. Um, but can it be nurtured? Can it be... Um, um, work to regenerate those those properties and principles and to seal up the things. I think absolutely, um, but it's it's something that I think has to continually be nurtured ultimately to um, rectify it in terms of the land codes. And again, that's what becoming a grid worker is about: is realizing um, all of the degradational sites all over the earth, all of the implosion of nuclear impact, and working to um, help souls in these areas because where there are rips in space times in the continuum souls get trapped so if you're a soul and you're entering into the astral and you're going through these areas in these nuclear sites you're going to be pulled and vacuumed into um deeper levels of fragmentation and ultimately obliteration um turning into space dust or who knows what going through wormhole systems on the earth and so um the, these are a part of the harvesting stations when we talk about people being reincarnated into harvesting, harvesting reincarnation. It's because of these types of things. The, the Earth's atmosphere and the, and the biosphere is so um, polluted. Um, and so these take a toll on those types of, of things, definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have any other questions. Is there anything else you wanted to cover before we finish up for today? Hmm. Um, yeah, so, well, basically I'm hosting the Washington DC event and we are looking to put together, um, a team that wants to go in and help us restore the grids there. And so, um, I invite anybody to go and check that out on my website indigoangel222.com. It's under the coursework tab. And, um, I ask that you at least have some knowledge of what grid work is. And if you don't, I do offer the Grid Worker Facilitator course to catch you up to speed on these things, on these topics. Um, and so, yeah, that's just kind of what I currently have going on. And um, yeah. You had one more question. Did you see this on the screen? It's from Sovereign Cosmic Wildman. He just wants you to know what, he wants to know what a cloister code is. Can you break down in detail? Do you know what that, I don't know what that is. Um. Cloisters have to do with specific groupings of races that have come down through descendant genetic lines. So um, one example of that is like a Melchizedek cloister, okay? Um, oh, okay. Descendants of the Elohai or the Elohim, and they are groupings of soul bodies that then descend into other genetic lines, but they... Um, Cloister means like a grouping of soul genetic energy, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, did, did, did you did you tell your oh, – do you want to tell them your website and everything? And, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. I got I, – I, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Was it a lot for you, Rob? No, I'm just not feeling too good. I got I got chest pains all of a sudden. I got I to gotta finish up. I might have to go to the hospital. Oh, my There's God. There's something wrong with me. I don't what? know what's wrong with me. Man. I've been like, I haven't been feeling too good lately. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. At, um, I mean, I know everybody here is against the doctor and I am too, but I'm having some like weird stuff going on. So I have to go. Like I, I, I'd rather just be safe than sorry, but I don't know if I should put my faith in the medical system or if I should put it in my own hands, but I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to end this on like a bad note, you know, like I just, yeah, yeah, I'm just telling you guys the truth. Um, well, let's talk after the show. Okay. And, um, yeah. and yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. You guys can find me at indigoangel222.com and you'll find everything there in terms of the coursework and services and stuff like that. And so I look forward to, um, doing a, another show when you're feeling better, Rob. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You knocked it out of the park today. It was, it was great. And thank you everybody for tuning in and, uh, until next time, everyone and have a good night. 
I think I think that's yeah. 